Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to have a proper look at the Ashworth Overlander. We're gonna run it in with a few miles after the big Honda monkey bike engine and everything's been rebuilt. And also, let's talk about everything to do with the upcoming world trip. Cue the intro. This adventure is supported by Ashworth Automotive in Western Supermare, the number one garage keeping you and Helmethead on the road. Okay, so, well, first things first, obviously, when I collected this and did its maiden voyage, um, I was just lost for words, speechless as you could imagine, because um, obviously I'm supported by Ashworth Automotives, in case you're brand new to the channel, and the guy that owns it called Lee has done a complete overlander, rebuilt so much stuff, and I'll try to talk for a bit of it as I go, I'm probably going to forget about some of the stuff. But I'll talk for as much as I can and again it sort of blew my mind and the thing of it is is the whole engine's been rebuilt and I'm going to have to do obviously big miles when I start my world trip and obviously the first thing to do is get all the way to the Euro Tunnel it's about 163 miles pretty much down motorways dual carriageways and motorways so I'm just gonna I'll be thrashing it all the way there so I want to get a few miles on it before then and this is my opportunity to at least get some miles in before it's just almost pinned all the way and um, there because i want to be able to keep up with all the traffic and all that sort of stuff especially on the motorways but first things first obviously i've had the well lee's fitted the fuel can to it and i think it's three liter the bike's almost empty so i'm going to fill up this and the fuel can and uh, then i've got straight away with this bike i've got about 100 plus miles in the tank because I'm not skinny and I do about 100 miles to the tank I say I am really skinny and sexy and then of course we've got actually need to do this side don't I and then of course we've got the uh, the three litre backup for when I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere desperate for fuel and that will probably give me I don't know another massive chunk of miles I'm not going to try and figure it out exactly because I don't really know at this point but anyway let's put a little bit of fuel in both of them and let's see how much both holes that's got almost on one bar so it's got less than well less than a quarter of a tank and that one bar goes really quick so i'd say less than that as well anyway let's put some fuel in look how cool this is look fuel funnel no fuel at the minute brand new uh what do you want cheap because i'm cheap all right let's do this one first oh bit of spillage oh there's that full let's fill up the old monkey bike what was that 3.8 litres £5.41 oh man I've done the wrong angle for this now all right let's put some fuel in this what are we up to £10.86 so around the same again it's had a bit in it so sweet that is I reckon I'm gonna have between them in reality I reckon nearly 200 miles worth of range. I reckon. Uh, why is that not going in? There it is. I reckon nearly 200 miles worth of range, and for that, that's like double. But we'll find out, won't we? When I run out of fuel, we'll have to fill it up and then do another 100 miles until I find a petrol station in the middle of somewhere crazy in the world. Well, now the bike is fueled, we've got a full tank. Obviously, now the little jerry can is full that will stay full until the french trip but i reckon i do reckon that 200 miles but we'll see we'll find out that 
little fuel can is my emergency can that's the if i can't find a petrol station i'm in some country in the middle of a mountain or across a desert then that is going to be my potential let's go this way that's going to be my potential uh get out of jail free card kind of thing and uh, i reckon that's that's gonna give me 100 miles i'm hoping i'll find a petrol station within 200 miles but who knows who knows what's going to happen that's the whole point of this world trip now let's talk about the bike and let's talk about a few things because obviously when i did the big reveal the maiden voyage i was hugely speechless and uh i just i just kept repeating myself because i was so amazed there were so many people that were so cool now let's look at it okay so for me this bike isn't like the monkey bike that i had before it feels like a completely new bike and let me explain why because obviously i put this bike through so much an incredible amount and obviously the biggest thing of all was the uk trip towards the end the thing that really caused some damage to it but we'll start off with why it feels so different and it's a real simple thing the back box now when i dropped the bike off the actual rack was bent and it actually snapped in the end and during that trip i had to have it reinforced as it was but eventually it snapped now this has been put back to straight so it's partly my old rack but partly not because what they've done is they've used like steel bars through it all to make it super strong put it back up to the height that it originally was now i've got used to it being bent and sort of slanting backwards so to have it back in the right position where it just slightly touches my back feels weird because i'm not used to it now and it's like oh okay that's back in place but awesome because it's upright with a slight sort of slight uh tilt the other way but obviously when i sit down on the bike it will sit a lot more true thanks and your four before for moving over anyway so obviously that feels a lot lot different and then on top of that of course i've now got proper big side panniers put on the bike and not no you know not having them there before feels like a different bike again because you've got suddenly you've got these panniers on and when the bo bottom of my foot just down here is obviously the fuel can and i'm used to moving my feet around on the on the pegs and now i know that that's there so i can still easily move my foot around on the pegs and stretch out and do all the stuff i used to do but now i've got a fuel can there as well so it's like that's a new feature obviously and again it feels like a whole new bike now the suspension if you've ever had um a monkey bike or you ride a monkey bike you'll understand this but the suspension is very soft it is very very soft indeed because it's like like almost like a cloud of bouncing around but it sort of suits the bike and the suspension on mine was clearly shot after all the stuff i've done and it was taking off roading and doing all the things you're not supposed to do i've done on this bike and the suspension was really bad it was really ridiculously soft and it was i think one one shock had actually completely gone and all sorts of stuff so what lee at obviously ashworth automotive that's done all of this build the guy that behind it, why the now this monkey bike is called the ashworth overland is because of all of his hard work now he's put on yss suspension on the back and also springs in the front and set up for my weight plus a little bit more well i think it's about 90 to 100 and kill 110 kilograms and because of that the suspension is a lot more firmer and it's a lot more raised but in a very good way now the bike's proportions now feel completely different it feels like i'm a lot higher up and i'm on actually feels like i'm on an actual adventure bike and it's so smooth that where before even this road here that it's actually quite bad i'll be going da, 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 down the actual road and i can feel a slight bump of course you can it's not going to be silky smooth but it glides it really really glides and that's an incredible incredible difference for, for me it's transforms the way these bikes ride now if you've got a standard monkey bike and that's the only thing you want to do is make that suspension so much better these yss go to astroweth automotive get him to put them on and set them up for your weight because it is a game changer in regards to smoothness it really really is it's so much firmer it's a little bit higher it doesn't sag down it's just a unbelievable improvement it really really is right now the other things that we've got what's obviously new on the bike is the front rack now the front rack is only bolted onto the light frame and i've been told not to put massive amount of weight in it whatsoever something quite light it's a very showpiece more than anything else so what i've ordered what i've got coming 
is a little yellow um, a one litre, I think it's one litre, it might be more, no I'm sure it's one litre, a uh, little yellow dry bag, the ones that you roll up, potentially that's just going to be a pants rack because when I go away I normally don't have the space and I take a couple of pairs of pants and just swap them out and wear them for days and it's minging, but now I could have a load of pants in the little bag ready to go so I could be pants happy during my entire adventure so more likely that will be the pants bag or I will do something like a first aid kit survival very again lightweight stuff survival stuff in case anything does happen to me I do have some kind of off or get stuck I could potentially grab the bag off the bites of going through the panniers to find it probably it'll be a pants bag because I think it's more funny but my brain tells me make a survival bag to go in the front and then it's always there to reach in case anything does happen but with my absolutely unbelievably awesome skills I'm sure it won't and then of course we've got a little cool little tinted windscreen just here as well how cool is that a little tinted windscreen to push a little bit of the air over my very slim slender gorgeous body um fantastic absolutely fantastic then of course Lee's put in a clutch so the clutch I mean the clutch wasn't gone on it before but he's, he's looked at all the things that potentially might go wrong on my bike during this trip so basically rule out straight away and everything or anything that might cause any problems um, so he's changed the clutch and he's also done the wheel bearings and apparently apparently well they were because I saw a picture one of the wheel bearings was completely rusted up and seized because obviously it done the well trip then it just sat so I'm lucky he did it so new clutch new wheel bearings I need to rub my nose it's full of bogus uh, right next and then let's move on to the engine the engines obviously had a new barrel and piston rings um, and um, I think that's what it's had obviously oil change is completely cleaned out all the rubbish that was in the engine from all the all the all the carbon burner stuff and uh, it's been rebuilt so basically top end rebuild I hope I'm getting all this right so now I've got to run the bike in a bit so as you can see I'm not just frotting it away I'm taking it nice and easy let's let that engine work a little bit get a little bit worn in before it just gets pinned and killed again the other stuff he's done now my original this is one of the biggest things that i love and we'll go for all this off camera but the um air filter is the original air filter and i bought a, a race air intake and what lee's gone and done is he's actually adjusted it and made it so the air sensor actually fits in the air filter because i took that out before and he's repositioned it cleaned it all up sorted it all out put it in the right place so it's no longer just hanging on by a cable tie and then on top of that we've had the exhaust now the, he's kept what he's done is he's kept all of the original features of this bike i was in all the little bits that i did that make it the helmet head monkey bike he's kept them and i think that's quite a precious thing do you know i mean precious and almost uh, almost respectful as well thing to do because he doesn't want to, he didn't want to lose the character of my bike because this bike's as far as i'm concerned this bike is the most famous monkey bike ever because it's gone through so much it's seen so much and i don't think anyone else has ever done anything that i've done or to you know with this bike the amount it's gone through and he's kept it he's kept all the little silly things from when i used to race the psychic kind of put all the race to fun and one of the biggest things was the 10 she exhaust what we call the 10 shit exhaust because it was rubbish and that snapped during the uh, uk trip and not just that of course it was rattling because the uh, baffle in the back wouldn't tighten up properly and all this stuff so what Lee's done is he's kept the end can what says 10 G, so it's kept its original and then he's had custom made and that's no mean feat custom made the exhaust that goes the exhaust that goes underneath the pannier because the exhaust actually sits higher up so he's had that done as well and you can it sounds I think better because it's a bit shorter and where it's positioned it's not as in my face as it used to be that i like because it was a little bit to be fair too silly loud because he's fixed the baffle it's probably cutting it down a little bit and it's not rattling and it sounds it's got that real mean verbal to it but it sounds better than it ever used to sound listen i don't know if you can hear that well enough but it sounds lovely a real lovely deep tone yeah 
this is absolutely incredible absolutely incredible now i've been given a few bits in the back as well for emergency cable in case something snaps um etc etc so there's a few other bits that i've been given to go with the bike as well and he's gone through everything as well like the brake pads to make sure they've got plenty of grip on them you know he's obviously fully serviced it again properly looked after it done all of the good stuff now i've added some stuff myself obviously since coming back um, and it's not been long since i've been back as well now one of the things that i experienced on the world trip was a problem with charging now i kept going through charging cables for the iphone after after cables kept going to petrol station i was buying some cables and then they'd literally go as soon as it started raining within a few minutes and i've got a tank bag that i ended up putting it in what's a pain because you're constantly looking down to see which way you could possibly go you are just constantly doing it and it's not good but i'm still going to bring the tank bag with batteries and stuff in because obviously it's super handy that's definitely coming on the world trip but what i've done is and i said it on the time is i've got the quad lot system now obviously i got sent all the quad lot system it was all reviewed and everything else and i could have probably been cheeky and just sent a message said will you send me out another wireless charging base but they've sent me a lot of product and the way i want to set this up is so it's you know easily changeable if i need to do anything else like put on my tom tom ride 550 sat nav that i might i will probably bring as a backup to be fair um but anyway i've put the wireless charger at the back run the cable down and obviously put it straight into my little 12 volt there so i can monitor how much power i'm sucking out of the engine and uh, and that way i can unplug it if i need to unplug it but it does work it's switched on and it is charging my phone so hopefully that will get rid of if i get a bit of rain any major issues and these cables here the little uh the one that's come with it is the one that came with a little wireless charger so it's a decent cable but if i have any problems with this at all obviously i can just swap out the cables or swap this out but hopefully that will be my charging system okay and hopefully the phone won't get knackered in the pouring down rain that's my theory so of course i've added that on the bike I've obviously got that coming. I've got, oh, for part of my kit that I've got, I've got an, um, um, a pa battery powered air pump that can also plug into this as well to charge it or give it a boost to be able to do the tyres with a digital tyre gauge on it. So what my theory of that is, is that first day of arriving, to pick the bike up again if nothing goes wrong with the bike i can check the tire pressures and then i can charge up the wireless charger in the first hotel so it's ready to go and in the last hotel wherever i am before i fly home again to keep that charge so it's always good to go i've got a puncture kit because obviously these these are uh, alley wheels and they all steel wheels whatever they are and they are I've not got any inner tube in them so i've got a puncture plug kit for that as well that's sorted for the just in case I get a puncture, I'm sure I won't because it's a monkey bike and it just continues to go. I've said that, it's all going to go wrong now, isn't it? Well, matter. It'll all be a laugh. Um, so that's that done as well. What else have I got? I've got in my basket, in my basket, I've got quite a few things I'm, I'm waiting for. So I've got a little emergency motorcycle tool kit, uh, a little uh, emergency biker's first aid kit as well and i've got a couple of other bits in there but to be quite honest i'm very wary wary very what's the right word i'm very i'm thinking on a financial basis right now this is going to cost me an incredible amount of money and i know all these bits of things i need and i'll be completely honest things are costing me a lot of money i haven't got loads of funds to buy everything i want to buy so some things i'm going to have to sacrifice and not stuff like that obviously but i've got to think about it is what i'm trying to say because this is going to be an incredible expensive long journey but awesome um but i have to think about that because financially i might be a lord and i know lords don't pay so i'll be paying for as little as i possibly can but the real world is this is going to be hard and i still today do not have any idea how i'm going to pull off all of this I generally do not know how I'm going to pull the entire world trip off. What I do know is it's going to take me years and I am going to do it because I do what I say I'm going to do and it's going to be awesome and regardless if I can't get the monkey bike somewhere or I have to bring the monkey bike back or something happens like I have to ship it home or whatever, I will fly out and hire or I will buy another bike but I'm hoping to do most of it on this baby, that's my plan. But like I said, I don't know so I'm financially already trying to think about like France is coming up and obviously that's going to be a good few days and there's a cost of hotels and i can camp 100 percent, but i'm a lord so i don't and i'm just going to figure it out as i go i'm not over planning it i've planned really i've planned the first three parts but of course that's all adjustable there's no foolproof plan 
I'm just going to wing it and we'll see what happens and I'm going to learn that as I go and I'm going to take you on that journey because I'm not going to I'm going to research some things but I'm not going to over research it because I want to learn and I want to go through it that's probably insane but that's how I'm going to do it anyway after yabbing to you for such a long 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 time should we find somewhere to pull over and have an awesome look at this bike and let's have some cinematic footage so first of all let's give you the Honda monkey bike Ashworth Overlander in all its beauty and its glory as we go along Center of attention they all want some I'm like fire hot as the sun the dance floor is burning call 911 oh, oh, oh. hands on my body I'm loving the heat but it won't come easy nothing's for free if you want me then prove it baby So I am sure you can agree, the Ashworth Overlander is gorgeous, isn't it? What a beast, what an absolute beast. Let's have a quick walk around again, let's have a bit of a chat about it. Um, I'm just excited, I've done not massive miles, and I don't want to do huge miles today to be completely honest with you, just get some under the belt, get that engine worn in a little bit. I just think it's, <laughs> I just think it's something really special. You know, when you look at it and you just can't, can't stop staring at it going, there's, I've never and I probably will never see a bike as cool as that again in my life right so the suspension side like I said is obviously it's printed on the top hopefully you can see that says YSS obviously he's done the internals to set up for the weight and then the ones at the back just here hopefully you can see them as well they've been sprung about halfway down perfectly set up for my weight now panniers what I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the panniers in regards to where I'm going to put things I'm thinking potentially this side will be the one where i'll put um a liter of oil so basically another oil change i'll put my tire pressure uh, tire inflator puncture kit hopefully first aid kit and all those bits plus things like my uh, waterproofs summer gloves spare stuff all in this side that's my plan so that's kind of like the utility side for everything to do with sorting out the bike mini toolkit hopefully and then in this side there's going to be where i'm going to have obviously the very expensive uh, helmet head clothes sort of like obviously the helmet t-shirt the helmet head top and all that kind of stuff potentially in this side nice down and low and then if i want to put anything like some food or carry anything with me like drinks and stuff like that that could also go in there as well so that's almost like my my living side of the bike and then of course the top box will have my rucksack in it that will have all of like my camera gear my drone everything else will stay here because this obviously is important everything i can put in a rucksack and be able to take home like my laptop and things so when i leave it to store the bike 
all my cameras all of that stuff has obviously got to come home with me but i will be leaving things like my helmet so then that's where my helmet will end up living when it's being stored away for weeks and weeks at a time that's kind of the plan in regards to storage and like i said before front rack is potentially the pants rack or the emergency rack with the first aid kit in and a couple of little bits super light stuff but potentially just pants i love the idea of a nice yellow bag full of helmet head pants and then of course if i start running out i can just hang pants off of here as i'm going along and they dry out wash them in the sink in the hotel room dry them out perfect i love the exhaust underneath tenchi <laughs> it just makes me smile that would have been such a customized piece of work to do that bottom part of the exhaust it's just really cool i love the way it's kept it's kept its originality like i said before the air filter just there that's really cool now obviously it takes a sensor so it's all working properly no potential engine management lights coming up he's reading the lot hasn't he the oil air at the um oil breather pipe that goes up there that is really cool as well because it looks like another air field but it's just breathing and it's nice and high and it's safe because let's be quite frank this is going to go for a lot i'm generally really excited to, to to get going or set off on the world trip and see how many countries I'm going to get to on that bike and what's going to happen on the way the story it's going to tell the journey and the <laughs> the typical me winging it where we never know what's going to happen i'm just excited as you can imagine i just want to load it up and i just want to go my weeks and weeks away but it's ready it's ready i'm ready i want to get loaded i want to go it's going to be absolutely awesome and i can't wait to take every single one of you along with me for all the ups downs the craziness the mountains the deserts everything it's going to be life-changing it's going to be huge and we're going to do it together so i'll see you in the next bonkers helmet head adventure this bike let's conquer the world mm -hmm.